Grade 7 math number 3.6b, rational numbers in any form. Sometimes a single problem may have rational numbers in two or more forms. It may have fractions, decimals, percentages, all in one problem. We have to convert one to the other. That way we can solve it. So if you remember, 15% is equal to 15 hundredths. That's what 15% means. And it could be written as 0.15. 0.5% means half of a percent. That would be 0.5 over 100. We multiply the numerator and denominator by 10, and that'll remove that decimal point. We'll have 5 one thousandths, and it'll be written as 0.005. 5%, there's no decimal point. See, it's just 5%. That's 5 out of 100. That's 5 hundredths, or 0 0.05. So if you're still confused and you don't remember how to do this from 6th grade from last year, you're going to want to go back to the Joanne School Grade 6 Math in video 5.6 and 5.7. You can refresh your memory real quick and then come back and watch this again because we're going to be doing a lot of converting, okay? All right, so you might see a, an equation that looks like this. You've got a fraction multiplied to another number as a fraction, because it's over 1.25 like this, it's over a decimal, wow, well, it's no big deal. All we do is this little part first, and then we deal with that afterwards, okay? So we're going to multiply 1 fourth times 76, and it comes out as 76 fourths, because they're like in a little, we can put a little invisible 1 here, can't we? 76 times 1 is 76 over 4 and we get 76 fourths, then all we have to do is divide the 76 by 4, and that is 19, okay, do it real quick on the side. So now it's 19 over 1.25, and that doesn't look too bad, does it? That looks a lot easier than that, doesn't it? So we divide the 19 by 1.25, and we do, and because there's a decimal point here, we move it over to behind the 5, which means we have to do the same thing for the 19. We move it over two spots, and then we can bring it straight up into our quotient, right? Because it goes straight up. So now 125 goes into 1900, which is now what it became instead of 19 because we moved the decimal. It's 15.2. So we know our answer is 15.2. See? Little step at a time. All right. Now, what if we have negative 1 and 3 fourths percent multiplied to 186.73? Well, we start by converting that negative 1 and 3 fourths percent to a decimal. And what we do is we move the decimal place two places to the left. It's right here and we go one, two, and we put it there. And that'll remove this percentage sign. And then we put a zero as a placeholder in that empty spot. See? So now it's 0 0.0175. And remember it's negative because it was a negative one and three fourths percent, wasn't it? So that's a negative 0 0.0175. And we just multiply that to the 186.73. And just remember that they have unlike signs, so that's going to be a negative answer, right? All right, so we do our multiplication. We watch our place values. We make sure that the numbers are coming straight down so we don't add the wrong thing. And we keep our place values as we multiply. First digit starts here. Second digit we multiply, the answer starts here. Third digit we multiply, the answer starts going here. See? We add it all up, and we end up with a negative 3.267775. Not that big of a deal. Just do one little step at a time, okay? All right. What if we have 1.35 multiplied to two-fifths? Well, we've got to convert them first. So we convert the two-fifths to a decimal. What does the 5 need to become 100? Multiplied by 20. So the 2 gets jealous, he wants to be multiplied by 20, and he becomes a 40. So 40 one hundredths is 0 0.40. This 0 isn't really necessary to the right of the decimal, is it? So we can just say it's 0.4. So now we just multiply 1.35 by 0.4. That's even easier. So now we do our multiplication. And because we have 1, 2, 3 hops for the decimal point in the equation, We've got three hops in the product. One, two, three. So it goes in front of the five. That zero is not necessary on the right-hand side of the four. So we can just say it's 0.54. All right? And they were all positive, so it's positive. 
So just remember to convert the rational numbers. If you have fractions, decimals, percents, just convert them so that they're all the same before you start solving the problem. And no problem is too difficult if we just take one step at a time. It might take a long time, but it's not that it's difficult, right? So keep your chin up. We're going to do another video for this unit, 3.6. It's going to be 3.6c, and I'm going to do a word problem that takes several steps to solve, and it's going to be adding a percentage to a number over an amount of years. I hope to see you there. Bye.